can you tell us a bit about yourself and what you do? You you have all these strong points, and I feel many of them come from not only self reflection but experience. If you could tell us what your hobbies are, how the lockdown has impacted you, and maybe what you were doing and the kind of person you were before the lockdown. Um. Okay. So how do I start? I do. I was raised um, in an environment where multitasking is a must. Um, and I guess that's why uh, many of my friends or many of my followers who, who know me or who've seen, who've came across me somewhere or in person know that I do a lot of different things um, like bodybuilding, swimming, gymnastics, uh, piano. I teach piano now. I got back into it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I honestly, it's like you said, it's experience. Um, before the lockdown, I was very, I was confident, but not mentally where I was today. Um, I took three years off from school, um, because I was going through, I was heavily going through like a crisis identity. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I wanted to become. And the reason that is, is because I come from a very traditional family. Um, they expect, the, and I'm also the eldest, so they expect me to become, basically they expect me to fulfill their dream that they couldn't, at that time they couldn't, you know, um, fulfill it. And that really, really impacted me a lot mentally, most mentally <laughs> and physically. So I got to a point where I was just like, where am I heading? Okay, I got into U of T. Okay, so where am I heading now? You know, from especially for the gap between um, being in high school and university, I wasn't sure where I was going. Um, my friends were all doing well, and I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do. You know, where, like, what did I want to study? What did I want to become? And so I took, after I think second year, I took three years off. Um, that's when I honestly grinded a lot. <laughs> I took on two jobs. Um, I taught, I had a lot of students at that time. Um, I was working at a restaurant. And then after that, I would go to the gym. Going to the gym took like two hours because at that time I was training um, to compete. And so I had extra cardio to do after my training. Um, and then sometimes I would wake up early in the morning at six o'clock, get my cardio done and then start my day again. So again, like, like you see, for me, multitasking isn't a problem. And when I don't multitask, that's when I realize like, my life is kind of like, you know, in balance. For me, multitasking a lot of different things, um, having different, a lot of different talents, that's where my passion lies. I don't have a passion just for one thing. Um, and that also contributed heavily on my personality because if even, let's say, I haven't met anyone who's done a lot of things to his shy, for example. They're always outgoing because you, you're forced to meet different people. You're forced to to go to different classes, obviously meeting different people. And that's how I make my connections. Um, sometimes I would um, go to conferences or I always try to make the best of what I have. You know, like it's great. My, I thank my family, my mother and my uncle for everything they've done, um, especially my dad financially. Like he's been working really, really hard. Um, it has not been easy for my family for the, for the past five years. And my way of thanking them and thanking myself is to do well in everything that I do right now. At least that's my way of giving back to them. You know, if it's not, even if I don't have a, like a house, even if I don't have um, a beautiful car or whatever, like the best I could do is, you know, show to them, prove to them through my actions. Like I said, it's not just word. And at that time before COVID, I was very like, you know, the person's like, oh, I'll do this. I'll do that. But I don't actually carry my words through so that was the difference especially that's why now I have a lot of respect for those who say what they say and they back it up with commitment and discipline because for me that's how I hold value for a person how would you hold how would you for example trust somebody and they say something or they say oh yeah um let's say for example you you have employees and then you trust those employees and you expect that those, you know, things to get to be done because they gave you the, their word. But then the other hand, you know, a few weeks later gone by, they still haven't done it. 
obviously your respect for them and your trust for them as their employee is gone out of the window. And of course you want, you want somebody else to handle the job instead. For me, it's like, it's not, what impresses me is not like somebody who's successful. I learned, I would learn from, you know, their mentorship and how they got there um, and their advices. But for me, I hold value to people who have integrity and character. And because that tells me from experience, that tells me that they've been through a lot to become who they are today. Because I've been, I was in the same position before. Yeah. On the topic of bodybuilding, mm -hmm. competition, as you mentioned, could you tell us a little bit about how you ignited that interest in it? I, I have been following you on social media for a while. So it's amazing to see your progress with it. And then when you started competing and just seeing your physical transformation as well, it's, it's amazing. I don't know very many people, probably on one hand, if that, uh, where they have that sort of commitment to physical fitness. And I am so impressed by what you do. Thank you. Um, so first off, like this is before the pandemic. Like I said, I was somebody who tried to become somebody I want to become but it wasn't me so that's how I started I started because I was like wow you know all these athletes look so beautiful I didn't see the hardworking aspect of it I just thought I want to have a shredded body you know this is like I at that time I loved training but not like to look a specific way um I was a very I was a very shy girl um who was very thinly built, like athletically built, not with broad shoulders or, you know, strong glutes. Um, and that was where I started. So I honestly, I was scared to go to the gym. I was scared because I, the majority of the people at the gym were like 70%, 75% men. And I was like, oh, damn, this is over overwhelming for me. So I went, I went from there to, you know, training and I got comfortable. I got the, where the body I wanted. Um, and then I think I saw somebody at, the, at my new gym who was like really physically beautifully built. And I had a lot of respect for that person. I was like, wow, I have never seen like, it's kind of like, I don't know if you watched it, but it's kind of like a Dragon Ball. You know, everyone's like, yeah, yeah. Nice structure, like definition everywhere. So I was like, so I had a conversation with her and, um, uh, she told me everything about it. And I was like, okay, you know what? I think it's something I want to try. So yeah, it was just testing the waters at that time, just because like I explained earlier, I'm kind of the kind of person, even if I accomplish something, let's say, um, I'm, let's say I'm a successful pianist. I don't just want to be a successful pianist. I want from there, like what else can I do to broaden up the spectrum to, because if you improve your skill set you can expand to other people. And that, again, that will build your business and build your connections, right? So again, that's uh, where I started. So I was like, you know what? I already, I've been consistent with that training for three years. Let's see what this can do. So I started that. Oh, I was, I'm going to tell you right now, I was not ready for it. <laughs> My first show was like complete disaster. Disaster really? because I was like mentally not there. Um, the first few weeks was good because I was like, you know, this is new, this is fresh, like all these diets and training. Like, but then each, um, each time somebody preps for a show, it takes, it usually takes between 24 weeks or 30 weeks, depending on where you are. Um, and honestly, if you think about 30, 24 weeks, it's like not too bad, but then if and you start thinking about it and sitting down, you're reflecting, you're just like, oh, shit, that's, been, that's like a few months of dieting. Then you just, like you said, you have friends. You see, you know, your friends obviously want to come see you. They go out, but they don't train like you. They don't eat like you. So you see them having a burger in front of you. You're like, oh, that's like temptations. So that's where I came in. I was like, oh, all this food, especially when I was restricting myself to just like um, chicken breasts, asparagus, egg whites. And then I see the smell, the whiff of pizza. My, my family, I live with nine people. So they're all eating different things. And then I was handling depression at that time too and anxiety. So yeah, no, my first show was not, not where I wanted to be, <laughs> but it was a great experience. Um, it set me up for my second show, which was postponed because of COVID, but at that time, I was very confident.
that I would have placed 10 times better than how I did in my first show. Um, just because my mindset was there. Um, I met somebody who honestly was such a great person. He was, he fixed my mindset, honestly. I was somebody who was not myself and he came in, he was like, nah, this is not you. Like, you have so much more to offer. And he was the one who actually built, helped me build my mentality that I have right now. Um, yeah, he, I, I think that I had it in me, but I needed, like you said, you know, the friends who you, or the people you're surrounding yourself with influence you a lot. He influenced and he brought something out of me that was already in me, but he, he brought it to my awareness. He was like, look, you did, you've, you've done so many things in the past. Like you accomplished so many things. You won so many, um, awards, like you have it in you. You just need to start believing in you, in yourself. And the moment he said that, I was like, okay. And even he told me, he was like, if you win or lose, it doesn't matter. When you lose, you don't lose, you learn, you learn something, you know? Um, and my whole life, um, I've honestly won a lot of things. I don't really place last in anything. If anything, it's between like first and third or second. And so I never really experienced a true loss before. And for me, that was when I lost or when I, for example, start something new, like that pride and ego has to drop right away. For me, it was really hard because I was raised by meeting my family's expectations and they don't expect anything below first or second. So I've always like hit my limit all the time. And for him to tell me that, I was like, it was such a wake up call because I didn't know how to deal with the, the loss, the defeat. Because when I was, I was devastated. I was like, um, especially with bodybuilding, once you start like hitting your eight weeks out mark, you start, you know, following the pages that um, you're going to compete in. And then you see like athletes being posted and you start comparing your body. You're like, oh my God, am I, is my abs coming out? You know, my shoulders protruding. This girl looks good. This guy looks good. Like, how am I going to compete against that? Like, that was what was going through my mindset before. After meeting this person, he, he told me, like, don't follow these pages. If you know this is going to be a trigger, why are you following these pages? Right? So he told me, like, you have to set yourself up for success. Because if you don't, you're just going to set yourself up for failure. And just like how you're following these pages. Why don't you have confidence in your skills? You know, so bodybuilding definitely fixed, like, changed my mind. Not fixed. I would say upgraded my mindset. Um, not just in my body, but mentally and academically as well. Before I was not, I was not doing well in school. I honestly, I thought school was not for me <laughs> um, just because it was very demanding and um, detail oriented, um, very challenging. And since I took three years off, I learned a lot about myself. I learned um, again, discipline, but not through my family. You know, like when you're a kid, your mom tells you to do this, do that. I learned discipline through myself now. I can't, it comes out naturally. Um, so yeah, because of bodybuilding, I'm back in school now. <laughs> um, I'm finishing up my degree um, in psychology and biology. Um, I finished my music degree a while ago. Uh, that's how I was able to teach. Um, yeah, <laughs> that, that, it's, done, it's done a lot of good things. Do you think you'll resume competition after lockdown restrictions have been lifted? Um, I wouldn't say going back to competitions just yet, just because bef you can't just jump into competing, even though it looks beautiful, you know, having these nice bikinis on and looking glamorous, but it has a lot to do with like the dirty work. <laughs> and for me, if I want to compete, I honestly need like a good year or two off to train seriously to compete so i wouldn't see myself competing um this year or next year um i would see myself getting back with a coach um making sure my hormones are my hormones are in check this time um my mentality is where i want it to be now <laughs> so that is no issue um 
but yeah, and before I jumped into competing because I wanted to look good. And now if I want to compete, I better win. <laughs> so I'm going to take time off um, to, again, it's called an off season to build um, not just your body, but posing has a lot to do with it as well. Because even if you have the most beautiful physique, men or women, if your posing is not, is not good, is shit, that's going to play the big impact on how you place um, overall. So, yeah, I'm going to do a lot of work before I head back into computing, especially now with um, getting back into piano, um, getting back into school, um, especially now I'm trying to um, build my network by involving myself in a lot of campaigns. And hopefully with the COVID restriction, you know, wearing off, I'll be able to actually go to fairs and meet people in person (laughs) and not just do like Zoom meetings or Skype. 